Good day all and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. Now today we are going to be looking at biology. Now looking at um, our previous video on nutrition, I actually explained things as regarding food substances and we were able to cover up um, the different classes of food and their various deficiencies, defects as well as their functions. So today, we'll be looking at the modes of nutrition. That will be our second video on nutrition. Now, considering the modes of nutrition, we have two different divisions of the modes of nutrition. We have the autotrophic nutrition and the heterotrophic nutrition as the two main broad divisions of nutrition. Now, when we talk about autotrophic, it has to do with a kind of nutrition that involves an organism benefiting or feeding itself. Now, this is also called self-feeding. Self-feeding. Okay? And it is usually exhibited by plants exclusively. Okay? So animals are unable to carry out autotrophic nutrition because they cannot produce or manufacture food by themselves. Okay? And looking at this autotrophic nutrition, we have two divisions of autotrophic nutrition and what are they? We have them to be photosynthetic nutrition and chemosynthetic nutrition. Now looking at photosynthetic nutrition, we are referring to plants that are able to produce or manufacture or synthesize their own food. And basically it's green plants that are able to carry out photosynthetic nutrition in that it involves the use of simple inorganic materials such as carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, and water, carbon dioxide and water. Then, in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll, mind you, I can split this into two parts. We have photo and synthetic. Now, the word photo means light, while this one synthesis means to manufacture or to produce. So we can simply say that photosynthetic nutrition is a nutrition that involves production of food in the presence of light. Okay? So now in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll and chlorophyll, plants are able to produce their food. Okay? Chlorophyll is considered to be the greenish pigment that is found in the leaves or some stems of some plants. Okay? All right. Then we have chemosynthetic nutrition. This one has to do with certain non-green uh, plants that come in the form of bacteria that are able to manufacture their food without using sunlight energy. So what do they use if they don't use sunlight energy? Of course, they use um, the combination of simple inorganic substances, chemical substances, and by simple redox reaction, they are able to manufacture their food. So they harness the chemical energy from the chemical reaction to produce their food. We have classical examples of these ones to be, we have the sulfur bacteria, we have the sulfur bacteria, then we have the ion bacteria, we have the nitrosomonas, we have the nitrobacter, and the rest of them, okay? So those are the ones that fall under the chemosynthetic um, nutrition, okay? Then looking at heterotrophic nutrition, this one talks about uh, animals, because now heterotrophs are simply organisms or animals that are unable to manufacture their food, or hence they depend um, directly on the plants, their food, meaning the autotrophs for their food. Now looking at the heterotrophic um, nutrition, we are talking about uh, animals, animals, so it's a kind of animal nutrition. And again, uh, it can further be divided into two parts. So, you know, initially I told you that autotrophic nutrition has to do with self-feeding. So, I can say that heterotrophic nutrition has to do with dependent feeding. Dependent feeding. Meaning they depend on autotrophs for their food. And we can further split the heterotrophic nutrition into two parts. It's written on the board here based on what they feed on and also based on how they feed. So looking at the first part, based on what they feed on, let's see. First, we have herbivores. Herbivores. 
And then second, we have carnivores. Carnivores. Then we have omnivores. Omnivores. And lastly, we have the detritivores. Detritivores. Now, based on what the animals feed on, we have these four um, divisions. Talking about herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, and detritivores. Then, based on how they feed, we are having things like holozoic, holozoic nutrition. We have things like parasitic nutrition, things like parasitic nutrition, and then we have things like um, we have the symbiotic, we have the symbiotic nutrition, and then we also have the saprophytic, saprophytic nutrition. Okay, so these are based on how they feed. All right. Now looking at based on what they feed on, let's start with the first part there. We have the herbivores. Herbivores are simply considered to be plant eaters. So they basically feed on plant materials exclusively. Okay? And we have classical examples of herbivores to be um, cattle, we have cattle, we have sheep, and then we have goats. Okay? So these are organisms that basically feed exclusively on plant materials. Then looking at the next, which is Carnivores. Uh, carnivores, they basically feed on flesh materials. Okay, so they feed on, I can say they feed on fellow heterotrophs. All right, based on the fact that they feed on animals. Of course, we don't have any fleshy plants, either we have fleshy animals. Okay, so they feed on flesh. And classical examples of carnivores include we have the lions, we have lions, we have the cheetah. We have the uh, dogs, yes, and the rest of them. Those organisms that feed on just animals exclusively. Okay, then looking at the omnivores. Now, omnivores are simply organisms that feed on both plants and animal materials. And classical examples of such include man, man. Then we also have even um, a good example, cockroach. Yeah, cockroach. Cockroach also and um, feeds on dead, sorry, uh, feed on plants and animal materials, okay, just like in the case of man and some other organisms as well, okay. Then now uh, we have uh, the detritivores. Now, this is even the one that I'm about to really digress a bit on. Now, looking at detritivores, detritivores are simply organisms that feed on detritors, detritors. And what are detritors? Detritors are simply um decaying plant and animals materials so they are decaying plants and animals and animals materials okay animals materials now um any organism that feeds on decaying plant and animal material is said to be called a detritivor but mind you never should you mistake a detritivor for a decomposer a decomposer. Most times, students they mistake one for the other. Now, decomposers are different from detritivores in that decomposers they tend to um, absorb this dead, decaying organic matter. What does that mean? It means that they don't have openings like the mouth where they ingest food materials, but rather what they do is that they are able to to absorb the food, the decaying organic matter, and then um, collect their nutrients, they absorb their nutrients directly. And such a uh, means of you know obtaining nutrients is known as extracellular digestion. So they are able to carry out extracellular digestion by simply absorbing externally the nutrients from this decomposing matter. And classical examples of decomposers are bacteria bacteria and fungi so any other organism that feeds on decaying organic matter that do not fall under the bacteria and the fungi they are simply left positioned under the detritivores so the, the difference between the composers and detritivores is that detritivores they have open in the mouth that they used to ingest these food materials okay as the decomposing food materials 
And classical examples of the composite of detritivores now include the earthworm. Yes, the earthworm. And then we still have another organism. You must have heard of this organism before, the vulture. Now, vulture is known as the scavenger. Of course, you know that scavengers in the ecosystem, they are considered as garbage collectors. So what do they do? They tend to clean up the environment by eating on decomposing matter. But mind you, a um, vulture being a scavenger has a mouth being the opening where it ingests food material. Okay? So that's it. So uh, this is also another example. Then we also have the aina. Yes, the aina. Aina is still another classical example of um, the treatable, not the composer. Like I said, the composers, the examples of organisms there are bacteria and fungi. Then let's move on to the next. Based on how they feed, of course, we have holozoic, we have parasitic, we have symbiotic, and then we have saprophytic. Now, considering the first being holozoic, holozoic. Now, for holozoic nutrition, this kind of nutrition involves feeding on solid food materials. And it, I can say it involves four, five steps. And what are the five steps? The first step is ingestion. First step is ingestion. Then the second step is digestion. Digestion. Then the third step is absorption. Absorption. Then the fourth step is assimilation. Assimilation. Then the fifth step is ejection. Okay? So these are the five steps that are involved in holozoic nutrition. We have the ingestion, the digestion, the absorption, assimilation, and ejection. I mean, you nearly all animals exhibit holozoic nutrition, okay? And the next in line is actually parasitic. Now, considering parasitic nutrition, we have plant parasites and animal parasites. So it means this parasitic nutrition is to two perspectives now. Now, we have plants that are parasitic in nature. And classical examples of plants that are parasitic are we have the doda, the doda plant, and then we have the uh, mistletoes. The mistletoes, the mistletoes, they are also called the lorantos, lorantos, and then we also have the witchweed. So all these are classical examples of plant parasites, uh, which we is also known as the striga. Striga species. Okay. Now, what do these plant parasites do? What they do is this: they let's say this is the back of a host plant, a higher plant. Then what happens is this: now these parasites, these plant parasites, they have a device like a siphon. That siphon or like, like that, that device rather now, they use it and they inject it into the back of the higher plant. In order to you know get nutrients from the cell sap, the cell sap of the higher plant. So when they derive nutrients using that um, device, which is more or less like a siphon, the device name is actually called the ostorium. Ostorium. Now this is singular. Why the plural form of this is ostoria. Ostoria. Okay, that's the plural form of it. So this is what parasitic plants used to obtain um, food nutrients from their host plant, okay? So that is for parasitic plants. And again, in case you see a question and then they ask you that um, for the parasitic plants, what is their main mode of nutrition? It still remains autotrophic. Yes, autotrophic. Okay? Why? Because they still remain plants. In case you see a question on that concerning um, jam, for those of you that are praying for jam, all right? Then uh, we still have um, parasitic animals. Parasitic animals. Now, these parasitic animals, there are some that live at the outside of their hosts. So hence, those ones are called ectoparasites. Ectoparasites. 
those ones that, that, that live at the outside of their host, they are called ectoparasites. Then what there are some that live within their hosts. So those ones they are called endo endoparasites. All right. So now examples of ectoparasites include we have lice, we have fleas, we have mites, we have bugs, and the rest of them. Then why endoparasites? Classical examples are usually in the form of worms. Worms. When you talk about the uh, tip worm, that's talking about the flat worms now. Tip worm, tip worms. We have the blood fluke. We have blood fluke. We have liver fluke. We have liver fluke. Then we also have uh, we have the nematodes. Talking about the round worm, the Ascaris lumbricus, and the rest of them. But mind you, looking at tip worm, we have diverse species of tip worm that can that can act as parasite, endoparasite in man. And of course, what are some of these species? We have the Tania solium. Now, Tania solium is the one that is present in pig, the muscles of pig, so pork meat. Then we also have another known as Tania saginata. Now, Tania saginata is the one that is found in beef, that's cow meat. And then we also have Diphilobotrum lactum. Tephilobotrum lactum. Now, this one is the species that is commonly found in fishes. Okay, so all these are actually species of uh, of tapeworm that are also endoparasites. You know, I told you that these are the classical examples of endoparasites. Then, mind you, I said something just now concerning parasitic plants. We also have a group of plants that are considered as carnivorous plants carnivorous plants never should you mistake carnivorous plants for parasitic plants now carnivorous plants are simply uh, plants that feed on insects though they don't feed on all animals because of course you know that um, plants cannot feed on us so it's only insects so that's why they are also called insectivorous plants insectivorous plants now, these plants, what they do is this. They, they, they set a trap for reckless flying insects to perch on so that they can actually obtain a nutrient from the insects. And this nutrient usually comes in the form of nitrogen. Now, this is it. Carnivorous plants are simply plants that are found on soils that are deficient in nitrogen. Hence, they'll be unable to synthesize or produce protein. So what do they do? In order for, get, for them to get a supplement of nitrogen, they need to get it elsewhere since they cannot get it from the soil. So that's where they get it from insects. And classical examples of carnivorous plants are, we have the pitcher plant or nepenthes. Then we also have the sundew, sundew or drusera. And then we also have the venus light trap. Then we also have the bladder wort, the butter wort, and the rest of them, okay? So these are examples of carnivorous plants. All right, now looking at the next, we have symbiotic nutrition. Now symbiotic nutrition has to do with a mutualistic kind of nutrition that involves benefits from each other, most especially two organisms. And then one gives benefit to the other, and then the other one also provides benefits to the other okay so that's just one thing you should know about symbiotic under we'll look at symbiosis as an association better for you to understand it won't get from ecological management okay then looking at the saprophytic nutrition this kind of nutrition involves just a single organism and then it feeds on dead decaying organic matter and it can come in the form of the fungi organisms under the kingdom fungi here you have yeast, we have the bread mold, we have the, uh, which other one again? We have the slime mold and the rest of them. So those are, those are um, organisms under the kingdom fungi and they are able to carry out saprophytic nutrition. Now this saprophytic nutri nutrition is feeding on, on dead decaying organic matter. 
So it's just more or less similar to what I told you about the tritivorous nutrition. You understand the point? So this was the feed on dead, decaying organic matter. And their digestion is usually extracellular, meaning outside their body cells. And the classical examples include yeast, we have uh, bread mold, we have bread mold, then we also have slime mold, slime mold, then we have the rest of them under the kingdom, even mushroom too, under the kingdom fungi, okay? Then, um, don't forget this. This one is still very important. They are using that basically feed on their feces, their excreta, uh, their dung, okay? So those organisms that feed on their feces are called coprophagous organisms. Coprophagous organisms. These ones, they feed on their feces, okay? They feed on their feces. And then um, classical examples include dung beetle. So we have the dung beetle. Then we also have even rabbits. Yes, rabbit is still another example of organism that feeds on its feces. So from this stuff that we've been able to cover, it's my hope that you have been able to understand some certain concepts about the modes of nutrition. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share the video so that other persons will be aware of it. Those of you that are preparing for your O-level exams, SSE, or WIEC, your NECO, even your champ. So I wish you guys all the best. Thanks for watching and God bless.